Um, my name is Nagena. I am on in the data pillar team here at Clavio. Within that, I am on the events query team. Uh, and today I'll be talking about uh, how we made funnel analytics possible for our customers using ClickHouse. <clears throat> First, I'll talk a bit about what we do here at Clavio and then dive into funnel. Uh, so Clavio is a marketing automation uh, company. Uh, we do targeted messaging, data integrations. We enable our customers to do targeted messaging, data integration, and analytics. And the team I'm in focuses on analytics. Um, so I'll talk a bit more about that. Our customers um, get data from Clavio via APIs, internal dashboards, and downloadable reports. I'm sure you all have seen this slide before. Um, and these are some typical use cases that uh, we that our customers are generally looking at. Um, we want to give our customers the flexibility to answer any questions about their customers and their data. And my team here provides the query layer um, that other teams develop these features on. So one of our latest features um, is the funnel analytics feature, uh, and I'll talk about how we enabled it. So what is funnel analytics? Uh, so that's just a strategic approach to track and analyze user interactions at various stages of a conversion process. So you can see a customer can set up a set of steps and um, we enable them to see different metrics on each of those steps. Uh, and if you have written uh, funnel queries before, um, you will know that as you add more steps and more filters, these queries can become unwieldy, kind of complex to understand, uh, kind of hard to, and even more difficult to debug as you go into production. Um, and so for us, um, using ClickHouse, we are able to provide uh, as much flexibility and configurability to our users um, with a query that is simple to understand. So here's a quick visual on how we went from this visual on the left to uh, a query that basically powers the data that you see. Um, so that, that's because there is this um, function within that's already, it comes out of the box from ClickHouse that does most of the heavy lifting. This function is the window funnel. Um, that enabled us to just go quickly from this visual uh, into the query. And the simplicity um, basically enabled us to have uh, simpler code uh, that we were able to just create templates for, um, which were then we were able to dynamically generate, <clears throat> dynamically generate this query. Um, so I'll break down what we have in this query a little bit more um, and talk about some of its components. Uh, so well, one of these is the sliding window. Um, so in this example, there's a 30-day sliding window, which was a, an important feature for our customers. In this example, uh, our customers could be look, would be looking at a not uh, three months worth of data. So start of September to uh, start of December um, with a 30-day sliding window of their, their customer uh, starting and completing the steps that are mentioned here. Um, and then the simple conditions indicating the criteria for each step. Um, so those are these metrics and then the, the IDs and then the names of these metrics that we have here. And so if we were to be writing this in other types of databases, would, that would likely mean small, smaller and more queries for each of these steps, but with ClickHouse, we were able to get this out of the box pretty for free and in a way that was easy to understand. Uh, and another um, another thing here is the strict increase input parameter, which does, handles all of the validation of making sure that within each step, within each step, the timestamps are actually increasing. So this also takes out some of that validation SQL that you would need to write. Um, and then a little bit more uh, interesting finds, which 
the level zero, which we had to filter out. Um, it's basically keeping count of the um, events that never really made it uh, into our what our customer wants, but depending on folks' um, use case might be important. And then another pretty powerful uh, input parameter that could go after a strict increase was this strict order parameter. Um, this parameter would basically interrupt the count or processing of events if there is a uh, another event in between two steps. So an example here would be if someone, if this, if a consumer, um, after adding something to their cart, then clicks on another thing before placing their order. Um, if folks don't want that to count, uh, using a stri the strict order uh, parameter would automatically filter out uh, the placed order count for that customer. Um, and this is a important um, feature, but a bit hard to uh, understand, or not understand, but um, a bit hard to debug and like be sure to know, uh, be sure to know about uh, and make sure that your where conditions are set up so that it works as you expect. Um, so yeah, for us, um, we are able to easily ingest some data into our test database, kind of um, prototype this query and validate that we were getting the data that we were expecting. Um, but how can we then get to production? Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the potential issues we were going to face um, and then how we were able to overcome those. So there's potential for some issues, mostly um, due to how we store our data. Um, currently, our data store, our data storage is optimized for single metric queries. I'll talk a bit more about those. Um, but now with funnels, um, our data, our queries require data for multiple metrics, um, and our data is distributed across different clusters that are unaware of each other. Um, and so we had to come up with how, how to get around this, um, but to just give a little bit more color, I'll go over the uh, our, like topology um, and how we keep our data. So our ClickHouse topology kind of looks like this. We have 128 servers, um, 16 of what we call logical layers, uh, then these are just 16 clusters. Um, each cluster, uh, each layer has four physical shards with two replicas each. So these are some random numbers, but assume that there are 16 um, layers. Um, and yeah, originally um, when we designed this cluster, um, the data, the data for each metric type would land in one query in one layer. Um, and that is because it worked well with our typical query pattern. Um, and so what does our query pattern usually look like? So most of our queries are like this. Um, it's a query that is, that is about one event type or metric. Um, how many people opened an email? How many people purchased a product in the last month? Um, and different uh, groupings on each of these like metrics. Uh, so by co-locating this data into one layer, we're able to limit the radius of our query um, while still being able to utilize uh, like some of the great features of ClickHouse, such as a such as the uh, distributed like aggregations and so on. Um, and if depending on different use cases, if we need to scale certain layers, we can scale them independently of one another. And so to go a little bit deeper on how this works, um, within this is basically how we configure those. Um, on the application side, um, before the application makes a request, it knows what layer can answer the question uh, so if it's looking to know, to figure out how many people opened an email, it knows that layer two is where that 
is where it can get that data from. So it, it picks layer two, but and then initiates the query on any one of the eight servers on on layer two. Um, after that, Clubhouse takes over and makes sure fans out this query to each of the shards um, and handles a lot of that heavy lifting uh, and also does the uh, intermediate aggregations on each of those shards um, before the initiating like for the initiating server does the post aggregation and returns back the results to to the application. But now, um, well, the problem with our funnel is that the funnel query is a multi-layer query. And what do I mean by that? So the funnel combines our typical queries. So typically, we can answer how many people clicked an email or how many people purchased a product. But we don't answer how many people clicked an email and then out of those people, how many of them went on to purchase a product? Um, in this example, layer seven can answer one of these questions. Layer 13 can answer the other question, but so these, these layers cannot answer a question that is a combined, a combination of these two metrics. So what we have to do is find a way to query all these layers for the data that we need. Uh, so uh, we we have a global, so for that, we have a global cluster that registers all of the shards and replicas across all of our layers. Um, that, that would mean that we have this global cluster configured that has a view onto each shard and then each replica. So this, this global cluster knows to look at all 64 shards. Uh, I know there's only four here. There's only four layers here, but think of that as 16. So 16 times four, 64 shards um, for each query that is issued onto it. But, and this, this helps us solve, this will get us uh, an answer for our funnel requests, but it's not without its limitations. Um, it, it does work and it works well enough. Um, but when you think about it, this is uh, a very expensive query um, for a query that looks like this, um, where we have four metrics. Um, we know that we need to only talk to at most four layers to answer our question. Um, but however, by using this, um, we are we are sending this request to 16 different layers. So that is 64 different servers when this can be handled by, by basically a quarter of that. Um, and this is an issue because we're processing a lot of query reads per second. So these queries, even though uh, they aren't returning any results, are eating into our maximum concurrency limits that we set on our servers. So how do we how do we limit this um, so that these queries are going to the layers that we need and the layers that we know have uh, potential to respond with the data? Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by merge here, uh, but that is we're basically are looking to find a way to limit our query to the to the right layers. So here uh, we want. We don't want to query all of the layers. We just want to query the ones that have these different metrics on them. And so uh, how we do that is by using merge, um, which is a ClickHouse function, which I'll talk about. Um, but how we end up doing this is by making our different layers or clusters aware of one another um, using the same type of configurations that I showed earlier um, earlier here. Um, so here we'd be creating a cluster for each layer that is aware of 
all the other layers individually, um, and then create distributed tables on all of the servers that show, uh, that basically mimic uh, the layer number, um, and then merge, which was free out of the box uh, click house function, it would create a temporary merge table. Uh, so basically it doesn't store the data, but creates a virtual table that we it that it fans out these different requests in 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 parallel to um, and uses regular expressions to figure out um, which which table which tables to read from which is a very new thing to me that I uh, I don't I don't think I've ever like thought about um, but here it's just saying, there are these tables called events, layer, and different numbers. Um, only read from those that match this regular expression um, and, and be able to like do this computation. Instead of now going to all 16 layers, we are at max reading from these four layers. Um, so by doing this, we're able to reduce the footprint of our queries to basically a quarter. Um, and yeah, we were able to go from this visual that would have created, uh, that would have been a very complex regular SQL to a, this very simple, uh, more or less efficient uh, query that um, worked with our SLO um, using ClickHouse. Uh, yeah. Basically, that is that's my presentation. And if anyone has questions, I'll be able to take them.